The final topic on hemoglobin that I'd like to briefly focus on is how high altitude affects our body's ability to bring oxygen to the cells and tissues of our body. So let's begin by focusing on the oxygen binding curve of hemoglobin. So as always, the x-axis is the partial pressure of oxygen given to us in millimeters of mercury, and the y-axis is the fractional saturation of hemoglobin. And what the red curve describes is how much of that hemoglobin inside our blood is saturated with oxygen at some partial pressure value. Now, we know that at sea level, the total atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. And because the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere is 21% to find the partial pressure of oxygen, we simply multiply 0.21 by the total pressure of 760. And that gives us about 159 millimeters of mercury is the partial pressure of oxygen at sea level. Now, as we begin to increase in altitude, for example, as we climb a mountain, what happens is the air becomes less dense. So the distance between the gas molecules increases, and what that means is we'll find less gas molecules in the same volume of space at a higher altitude. Now, if the, less, uh, if the air becomes less dense, then the total pressure in the atmosphere decreases. And if we multiply 0.21 by a smaller total pressure, that gives us a smaller partial pressure of oxygen. So if we increase the altitude, the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere decreases. Now, what exactly does that mean physiologically? Well, what that means is the lungs will not be able to pump as much oxygen into the blood. And if there's less oxygen circulating inside our blood, less oxygen will be delivered to the cells and tissues of our body. And that is a problem because the cells need oxygen to produce ATP molecules in an efficient way. And these ATP molecules are used as energy molecules to carry out all the different types of processes that take place inside the cells and inside our body. Now, what our body does immediately is it increases the rate at which we breathe. So it increases the ventilation rate, and this is known as hyperventilation. And it also puts stress on the heart by increasing the rate at which the heart actually pumps. Now, although these are useful immediately, they're not very useful in the long term because this puts a lot of stress on the heart. So these responses, although they're effective immediately, they're not actually very safe and they're not very effective. And so a much more safer and a much more effective and efficient way, a much more long-term response is to actually increase the concentration of a molecule we call 2,3-BPG, and we'll see why that is in just a moment. And ultimately, what our body wants to do at a high altitude is it wants to increase the number of hemoglobin molecules inside our blood and also increase the number of red blood cells found in our cardiovascular system. Now, the question that I want to answer in this lecture is, why does our body actually want to increase the number of 2,3-BPG molecules? Well, recall that 2,3-BPG, 2,3-biphosphoglycerate are allosteric effectors of hemoglobin. And what that means is they can bind into the center pocket found in hemoglobin. Now, by binding to the center pocket of 2, 3, uh, of the deoxyhemoglobin, the 2,3-BPG stabilizes the T-state of that deoxyhemoglobin molecule, and that lowers deoxyhemoglobin's affinity for oxygen, and that means this entire curve is shifted to the right side. So if we examine this curve, the red curve describes this initial curve and the blue curve describes a few days following the exposure to high altitude. And that's when the concentration of 2,3-BPG increases. So 
by increasing 2-3 BPG, we basically shift the entire curve to the right side and that decreases the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. And what that means is, if hemoglobin is less likely to be bound to oxygen at a partial pressure of 20 millimeters of mercury, which is the partial pressure inside our exercising tissue, this point on the blue curve will have a lower Y value than the red curve. And what that means is more of the hemoglobin will basically unload and release that oxygen to the tissue. So the red curve describes a Y coordinate of let's say about 0.32. And this describes, the blue curve describes a coordinate point of about 0.1 there's a difference of 22% according to this graph. And that means 22% of the hemoglobin will unload the oxygen inside this situation when we have a higher percentage of 2,3 BPG, a higher concentration of 2,3 BPG inside our blood. So how will increasing the amount of 2,3 BPG affect the oxygen binding curve, well, it will shift the curve to the right as seen in the following diagram, and this will decrease the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. And this means that hemoglobin will be able to unload and deliver more oxygen to the tissues. And that's exactly why at high altitudes, our body wants to increase the concentration of 2,3 BPG over time because we don't want to continually put more stress on the heart and cause it to basically increase the rate at which it pumps. We want to keep that rate the same. And to do that, we have to affect uh, hemoglobin in other ways. And the way that we affect it is by increasing the concentration of 2,3 BPG.